I'm talking to Katy Perry. Congratulations, first of all, on Hi. Prism. Thank you very much. And I heard all the way through a number of times unconditionally and I couldn't help but think this is a wedding song. Oh. Do you picture this being performed or being played at weddings? Maybe. I hope so. It's about that kind of a highest level of love. Yeah. Um, and that's what you should have to get married. <laughs> and it's devotional too. It's really. It's very devotional. And it's just, you know, about um, a love that is free of fear and full of acceptance and a love that you strive to have. You know, when you're first getting into a relationship, sometimes you can be a little scared to show your true self mm. and you wonder if that person will really accept you without makeup or um, with all of your flaws and your idiosyncrasies and your imperfections. And if they do, then they love you unconditionally. Speaking of makeup, you've been in makeup since 3 a.m. today. Yes, my face is falling apart right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Katie, you look terrific to me, but how do you cope? This is obviously a massive day for you, but it's not unusual for you to work It's not unusual, especially with release week, of course. Mm. Um, it's hard, definitely, singing in the morning. When you're a little kid and you're singing with your hairbrush in front of the mirror, you don't think to yourself, I hope I can do this at 6 a.m. <laughs> Um, but you know, I think that I just remember that I don't have to do it every single day. Um, but I do, I'm very I'm proud of this record. And so it's, it's, it's exciting for me to talk about it. Okay. I, I did watch you this morning. I thought she's, she's probably the queen of pop right now. She's very powerful. She's popping a bubble that's blowing. Actually, this bubble is just going to sit on my hand magically because I'm a witch <laughs> like this. Do you, be, being as powerful as you are and successful as you are, you don't have to prove yourself anymore. Do you ever just want to say, I don't want to do the 6 a.m. TV show? Yeah, I do. I'm Katy Perry. Can I just not do it? Uh, and then they'll say, We'll give you chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> My vice. Um, no, you know, I just know that it doesn't matter how much success I've had, that um, you always have to keep working really hard. And if not, someone else is going to come and work harder than you and mm. take that. I mean, I think that my songs are really what it's all about and hopefully if I can um, connect with my core and remember my love for music like I did when I had when I was 13 and picked up the guitar then it will always serve me well and I have a lot of vulnerability in my songwriting which is becomes kind of like my strength. I don't understand. Meaning like um, people I think relate to the music because um, it's vulnerable and honest and like there's a lot of truth in the lyrics mm. and people always ask me, aren't you scared to be so revealing and personal? And I'm like, no, that's actually how I win. I think people really, really resonate with it. I felt that with Unconditionally is to sing that, you can't be cynical. You kind of have to step into a pure place. Yeah. Uh, an honest, sort of earnest place. Yeah, I went through a really tran a real transitional period in my life. Um, this spring, it was like I came to a fork in the road of my life journey and I decided to just kind of serve myself better and do a lot of self-reflection and I went on a cleanse and like um, got really deep with myself. Mm. And But a lot of the great songs came out from that. I um, I went from a dark place to a very light place. You sound really spiritual when you talk in that way. A bit like new agey hippie, yes. <laughs> but also, I mean, your your history is famous about how you were the, the daughter of some very religious people. Yes. And you didn't really know pop culture until you hit uh, 16 or 17. Yeah. What do your parents now think of, of you and, and your job and your level of exposure? Do they worry for you more? I'm sure in their own way, as parents do, they worry. But, um, you know... Uh, I think we all, me and my brother and sister, turned out okay and um, we're not on drugs, we're not in jail. Um, you know, I'm out there singing positive anthemic messages, um, so they like that. But, you know, I don't always sing positive anthemic messages. I sang about kissing a girl when I first came out. <laughs> so, um, you know, they have, they, they like it. I'm sure in their ideal world I would be like a preacher or something but then you know when you're a parent you have these ideas of your kids and then your kids become adults yeah and they just become their own beings and make their own choices did you feel that for a moment in your career there was danger that you'd always be the i kissed a girl person no because if i if i knew that that was possible i would never have 
I would have waited to play that card. Mm. So I was okay with going with that song first because I knew I had songs like Hot and Cold. Yep. And I had songs like Waking Up in Vegas and Thinking of You um, on the same record. Right. So I was okay. It's not, it was like, it wasn't the only ace up my sleeve. Speaking of playing cards, you were famously talking about playing the nudity card just recently. Yeah. I noticed in your career that I often look for your cleavage in your music video well it stands out (laughs) when you have a d size it just (laughs) you can't tape them down enough (laughs) did you ever sort of want to just go okay i'm not doing that anymore or is it just well i mean you get to a certain age i'm 29 now where your body starts kind of falling apart and you're like i I just can't do it because you won't see anything besides cellulite (laughs) um so i mean if i did have some of those younger bodies like miley's or rihanna's Maybe I would be sprawling out there a little bit more, but I did do it in the teenage dream era, Mm. but um, I think I did a lot of other things too. And I think it's important to not just play the sexy card, be sexy, be smart, be sophisticated, you know, be all those things as well. Well, you're different in that you write songs. Yes, I don't shop for my songs. Like no. I don't shop for my shoes. Well, you, you use Max Martin a lot, who is, you know, he's the guy. Yeah, he, well, he's, he's like my Oz, actually. Mm. I'm his little Dorothy. So what happens when you hang out together? Is it magic? Well, he is fantastic with melodies. I mean, this man, that's where all, that's why like a lot of the kids, little kids, there's, he's like the melody maker. Mm. Um, I'm good with melodies. My forte is lyrics. Um, and you can see that with the through thread on all of my albums. Mm. There's a lot of uh, different colors in the lyrics um but you know when we get together it's just a combination of great melodies and great lyrics and with dr luke involved a great production so yeah my daughters talk about songwriting their father's a musician and i always say to have the power as the performer you need to write would you agree about that absolutely Mm. to have that utmost power um, that separates you from everyone else writing is the key and also playing an instrument i picked up a guitar at 13 um and that really find helped me find my voice as an artist you still speak to your childhood friends uh some of them some of them yeah and like some of the friends i went to high school with i didn't really go to high school but grade school mm. a couple of them i was you know i traveled all around the usa i moved like seven to nine times or something from three to 11. So I didn't get a chance to make really solid friendships. But um, when I moved to LA at 17, which, you know, was essentially 12 years, 11, 12 years ago, I have all those same friends Mm. in my life. Do they call you out if you're ever getting... Yes. Oh yeah, they call me out. They know who they are. (laughs) (laughs) I have great friends that are not afraid of, you know, just telling it like it is and my sister too she tells it like it is my whole team around me you know has been with me when I was in the negative in my checkbook so they know me they know you yeah they're not afraid um there's been talk in the media about box gap or the gap between your thighs <laughs> is that from <laughs> is that from Jemay it is from Jemay yeah. yeah have you seen Jemay uh yes I yeah. love Jemay How great I is love Chrisley so we're I'm just you know mad Another thing to make women crazy, you know, is is this next thing that we can't attain. Do you know? Do you think a box gap is? I, we've talked about that uh, growing up. I think in high school, mm. but um, it's not everything. I mean, your body just changes after a while, and when you get into your thirties, which I'm not yet, yeah. but I've heard about it, and I heard it's great. Um, you're not so uh, worried about outward opinions. You're more interested in serving yourself finally in a, a good way in a healthy yeah. way um box gap is cool if you're a teenager but it's not everything i've been watching the career of kanye west for a long time and i can see that he's had this religious upbringing he's turned his back on god he's had drugs and and sluts and he's he's almost coming full circle i think that's gonna you be his so? trajectory I, I think so do you think that that could be yours it, essentially we all come back searching for spirituality and end up where we started well, um, we always get to a point, a crossroads where you have to ask yourself, what is happening after this? And what is the meaning of all this? You start to ask yourself questions, of course. Um, but I don't think I'll go back to how I was raised because it was a bit more rigid than what I believe. And I believe in a lot more love and equality um, than I was raised. Um, it was a bit too sheltered even though I love my parents. Mm. I mean, they're crazy and kooky and their own selves yeah. and their parents. Um, 
But yeah, I think that I am definitely on the search for this um, kind of spirituality, this connectedness with the universe and living very consciously. I read a book um, called The Power of Now by a guy named Eckhart Tolle about living uh, in the present. And that really kind of woke me up in a way and helped me in my songwriting. I mean, I just think that it's evident in some of the songs like Unconditionally and Love Me and This Moment. Um, they all have this kind of deeper meaning to them. So you're managing to not be jaded? No, I mean, I'm still jaded, <laughs> <laughs> most definitely. But um, I... I I'm still emotional, you know, I'm still affected when something's genuine. When I see something really genuine, I'm very touched. I mean, there was like a little kid on the way here. I meet fans outside of the hotel rooms all the time and they're great. Sometimes they're a little overzealous and excited. And the, then there were just two kids out here as I was um, driving in and I just rolled down the window and said, hi. And this one kid, he was so, his reaction was so genuine and pure and like, excited and you know he's not one of those people that just tries to collect every autograph from anyone mm. he's just like he was like he couldn't believe that this happened to him today and his emotion was so pure and it rubbed off on me and yeah. made me very happy i think i've got to wind it up thank you so much thank Katie you Pan. that was a fun interview 